You've probably heard me talking about this self-sufficient living skills bundle that's been going on, and I have been spending the last week flipping through so many of the incredible resources within this bundle. Now, I will say there's a lot. There's over 118 different ebooks and courses and lessons sharing incredible wisdom and knowledge with you, so you can live off the land and you don't have to rely on this corrupt and broken system for everything for your family. Anyways, I wanted to share some of my favorite things. One, first off, is off-grid homeopathy. This course is loaded with so much incredible knowledge, talking about homeopathy for first aid, for colds and flu, how to make your own homeopathic remedies. Like, as an herbalist who loves to teach that stuff, that's pretty exciting to hear it in the homeopathy realm. There's also some incredible fermentation guides, so many other amazing herbal recipes and food recipes and how to make your own sourdough bread, how to do your own organic gardening and canning of all of your foods. Really, there is so much. And yes, I know, I know. I've talked about it a ton, but this entire bundle is only $50 right now until Sunday, March 24th. I'm sharing my herbal first aid skills, which is a course that's $47 on its own. I'm sharing recipes that I used when I got my products into REI for herbal first aid kits and so much more. Y'all have to check it out. I'm serious. Like you can absolutely change your life with this bundle. So there is a link in the show notes for you and I hope you check it out. I hope you take advantage. Don't worry. You don't have to go through everything right away. You can access everything for up to a year. Once you're in the course or have the download, it's yours for life. It is a steal of a deal. Okay, self-sufficient living skills bundle in the links for you. Hello and welcome to The Herbalist Path, a podcast where you'll discover how to make your own herbal remedies at home so that you can take better care of yourself, better care of your family, and better care of our planet. I'm Mel. I'm a clinical herbalist, environmental educator, and mountain living mama with this crazy passion for teaching more mamas and their little loves how to use plants as medicine in a safe, effective, and tasty way so that there can be an herbalist in every home again. It's an absolute honor to have you on the journey down the herbalist path with me so that together we can make herbalism Hashtag spread like wildflowers. Well, hello. Thank you so much for tuning in to another show on the Herbalist Path with me. Of course, I love knowing that you are tuning in. And for today's episode, I just wanted to take some time to talk about something that I hear from a lot of people reaching out to me or mamas that are just really wanting to use more natural remedies and um, kind of step away from our pharmaceutical industry and just feel a little bit more empowered about how they take care of themselves and their family. So I've heard a few moms talk about one huge problem they're running into. And so I figured we would chat about it in this episode today. And the big thing that happens for so many of them is that they just can't get their family to buy in or to work with them in the realm of using natural remedies, which can be tough. I mean, on on one hand, you could be like, whatever, I'm the mama, I control this house, I rule the roost, and it's my way or the highway. But when you're feeding everybody and you have everybody kind of going against you and what you want to do for your own personal health and for their health, it can make it really, really challenging. I mean, one, like... Let's face it, a lot of the stuff that we know we're not supposed to do or that isn't the best for us is delicious or designed to be addictive. So it just gets gets really, really tough. So I just wanted to 
talk about it a bit more, I guess. And I think one of the reasons I'm hearing is that some of the partners are just kind of stuck in that Western medicine mindset. So when I say the Western medicine mindset, it's like, you know, you take a pill to fix this problem and everything is all good or take this for that kind of problem. And it's really, really sad because right now, That system is so incredibly broken. And yes, it is also an incredibly necessary system. But the fact is that it is overloaded right now. And I think that we can probably agree that they haven't been able to take care of us let alone take care of the people that are working within the system, which causes a cycle of like, okay, the people are burnt out and overworked and and not feeling appreciated. So therefore, the care that they're able to give is even worse and so on and so forth. It's It's sad and it's upsetting to me because our Western medical system, like what they can do is absolutely mind blowing. Western medicine can save lives in the most epic of ways. It saved my life many, many times. So I'm super duper grateful for the science behind it and all the things that can happen. But it's also one of the most corrupt systems out there. It is there for sick care and not for health care. And it's really, I think it's just designed to keep a fortunate few amount of people extremely wealthy while keeping the rest of us extremely sick. And it's, it's sad. It's sad. And Here's the deal. I I could talk about the broken Western medical system forever and ever and ever, but I really don't want to do that in this episode. I'd rather, you know, bring a little positivity or just not go down that really long and dark and often ugly rabbit hole. So some of the other people I've heard from and that are getting some resistance from partners or family members or what have you is that they think that all this plant medicine and natural health and natural healing is just a bunch of hippy dippy woo woo bullstein and that it doesn't work at all. And I can't blame them. There's been a ton of snake oil salesmen out there that are posting all the things that are going to cure all the things, right? And then there was the essential oil craze that was happening for so long, and I guess it still is, but I, I think maybe there's not quite as many people out there that have gone to a party and come back and suddenly been a healthcare expert because they were just taught all these things that these super powered essential oils can do. And um, I'm not knocking essential oils all the way. I use essential oils. They're really, really powerful plant medicine. But what was happening for a while there was... uh, less than awesome, I'll just say. Um, if, if you, I'm not going to dive down that rabbit hole either today, but if you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, and we'll just cut it right there. Um, I guess I just want to backtrack on like the snake oil salesman or the essential oil saleswoman or man, and the people really that tell you, oh, I have this one herb or this one product that is going to cure all the things for you. Come on. If you're listening to this show, I don't think I need to tell you this, but just don't listen to them. And maybe just have your family member listen to this show and be like, oh, yeah, <laughs> that does sound kind of silly. Um, but I guess my point being is that it's just not how herbs work. It's not how the natural lifestyle realm works, really. And yes, herbs and essential oils both can do incredible things. And a lot of these things can't be explained by science. So like the skepticism is understandable. I I totally, totally get it. Because if you can't prove it, then what are you going to do? Sometimes you have to prove it by anecdotal evidence. And the fact that thousands of years people have been using these things as medicine and so on and so forth. Because 
you know, (laughs) here's the reality is that it costs money to perform these tests, right? And so the people that are more often than not funding these tests happen to also be heavily affiliated if they are not the leaders of various pharmaceutical companies. And so they don't want us to know that plant medicines can work. So they're not going to fund a study unless they think that they can somehow patent that particular constituent or what have you. So, um, yeah, that's that's pretty whack. But there is still a lot of epic scientific evidence behind so many different herbs and so many different plants. And um, it's pretty amazing when you balance some of the hippy dippy woo woo because there is a bit of it. Right. And you take some of the science as well. And then you start using more and more herbs and more and more plants and just kind of get blown away at what they can do. I think that is really empowering and really, really, really cool to be able to do. And, you know, I want to, while I'm talking about the Western medical system and and science and those kinds of things, um, I do want to bring up a little something, something. And it's that... (sighs) So many people right now are reaching for natural remedies because our system's broken. They're being let down. They're sick. They're not getting cared for. They're being sent from appointment to appointment, but they get their seven minutes of time and a stamp on a piece of paper or a computer sheet or whatever um, and thrown out the door and not really looked at as a human, as a whole human being, which is really rough because we are whole human beings and we're more than a number and our problems are worth more than a seven minute visit that takes a half hour in a waiting room to get to. Um, But also in that, as more people are wanting to step away from the Western medical system and the broken sick care system, I want to encourage more people to also shift some thought because we have been trained to take a pill for every single darn problem, right? You get sick, you go to the doctor, you get a prescription, they give you these drugs, these drugs fix that problem, and then they give you all the other little problems that go in the long, 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 long list of side effects, right? But we're sick of that, right? And and that's not really how herbs work. So many people do come to me and they say, hey, Mel, what herb do I take for this problem? And And here's the gig. It's rare that you are ever going to hear me say, take this herb right away, because I want to look at a person as a whole body. And because not every herb is going to do the same thing for you that it would do for your sister or your mother or your daughter or your neighbor or anyone. And herbalism and this natural living lifestyle is exactly that. It is a life style. It is a whole body thing. It's what you put in your body. It's who you surround yourself with. It's your mental state. It's your stress levels. It's all of these things within you as one human being coming together. So to look at herbs as this instant fix pill, what herb is good for this, is is really putting herbs into a very, very tiny little box when they belong spread out all throughout the world so their roots and their leaves and their branches can touch everywhere and everything. That's really what needs to happen there. <laughs> and I feel like this this episode is just kind of a, a bit of me ranting and rambling quite a bit just because... Well, I love plant medicine, obviously. I think if you're listening to this show, you know about that. And I really, truly do want there to be an herbalist in every single home again, right? Just like it used to be. I want grandmothers and great-grandmothers and mothers and children passing this information on and on and on like it was, just like it needs to be again. It needs to be that way for our beautiful planet. It needs to be that way for the health of our families and the health of ourselves and, and so much, so much more beyond that. Um, 
Okay, I think I was talking about family members who think herbs are all just a bunch of hippy dippy woo woo stuff, right? And like, I totally get it. I I super duper get it. Um, but point being, there's a ton of science also behind plant medicine, and when you start to understand the medicinal properties of a plant, or a little bit more about their medicinal constituents, or even the soluble of those medicinal constituents and whether you've extracted those medicinal constituents in the right kind of solvent, all of those variables can really impact the efficacy of the herbal remedies that you make. And it's fun. It's art. There's no one right way to do it. it but there's there's science behind it. And it's it's a I, for me, I'm a total herb nerd. And so it's really exciting for me. And it's a lot of fun. And I think really discovering that and exploring that more is one way that you can really start to shift the mindset and the perspective of any family members that may be resisting the whole movement to a more sustainable lifestyle with plant medicine. Okay. So the other big complaint I hear from mamas who are trying to get their kiddos on board and trying to get their partner on board is that herbs are yucky. (laughs) They're straight gross. So many people think, but I do not. I know for a fact that you can indeed make herbal medicine taste freaking great. I do it on the regular. It's one of my absolute favorites favorite things. And here's the gig. You you really got to think about like the medicinal constituents of a plant. You got to think about their flavor profile and you got to think about all these different things. And you got to consider the fact that most of us in our society are trained to be addicted to sugar and to salt because then all of those heavily processed food like stuff you know, industry guys are really going to be able to sell us all the things and, you know, keep us all sick and back into that system of absolutely broken and corrupt and disgusting. Um, let's just <laughs> stop that somehow, some way, because it is super frustrating. And let's just focus and end the show on a positive note, or I'm going to ramble and ramble about all the things that chap my hide in our society that are are bringing us all down as humanity and our planet. My point is that you can make your natural remedies absolutely delicious. I want you to think about how much medicine you cook with every single day because your culinary herbs are epic medicine. And there's about a thousand and one creative ways to get all kinds of medicinal herbs beyond the culinary ones into your body and to get your kiddos to absolutely fall in love with them. Again, it's a blast. It's a great creative outlet. It can be awesome science experience experiments. It can be super duper fun. And I have a a class I'm teaching soon. I'm pretty excited about it. I want to invite you to it. I am teaching it live and I'm going to link it in the show notes for you. But I'm basically going to teach you how you can make really safe and effective herbal remedies and make them taste so darn good that your kids are going to absolutely beg you for more. Can you imagine that? Mom, can I have more healthy stuff? I mean, maybe they won't say it that way. Maybe you need to come up with some creative name for it. But I've done this time and time again. I'm going to basically teach you my medicine making mixology formula. formula, And it's going to be fun. And it's going to help you feel confident in the remedies that you're making for your family. It's going to help you connect deeper with your family and show them what is possible in this natural healing world. Okay, so I am linking the registration for the class in the show notes here. I really hope that you do join me. I've got four times to join me because mom life, 
Mom life is busy, and I know that you're busy, so I wanted to make it so that hopefully you can make it to to one of the lives and you can ask me your questions and all of those kinds of things. And yeah, that's it. So if you resonate with anything I talked about today in the show, if you've got the family members that are hesitant to want to shift ways of living and you're ready to, but they're like, heck no, and it's making it hard for you to do it, reach out to me and let me know you heard this podcast. Let me know that you get it and you know that feeling and definitely get yourself registered for the class. And if you love the show, please give me some stars or share it with a friend so that we can make herbalism spread like wildflowers. Thank you again for listening to another episode. And I hope you have the most amazing day after you listen to this show. Take care. Thank you so much for tuning into another episode of The Herbalist Path. Being on this journey with you is absolutely incredible. If you dig this episode, please leave me a review on your favorite podcast player and share it with your friends so that together we can make herbalism hashtag spread like wildflowers. On another note, I must mention that while I know you're getting some good info here, it's important to remember that this podcast is purely for entertainment and educational purposes and is not intended to be a substitute for medical treatment. While the information in this podcast is absolutely relevant, herbs work differently for each person and each condition. That's why I recommend you work with a qualified practitioner, whether that be another herb herbalist, a naturopath, or your doctor. So thank you again. I am truly honored that you're tuning into these episodes and on the path with me to make sure that there's an herbalist in every home again. Don't forget to share this episode with your friends so that we can make herbalism. Hashtag spread like wildflowers. It has been so much fun and so, I don't know, joyous watching all of my medicinal plant friends popping up in my garden from the Alicampane to the Comfrey and the Arnica. I love seeing these friends pop up. And if you are still trying to decide what to grow in your medicinal herb garden, you've got to grab my guide. It's all about the most essential herbs that every mom should know and should grow. So I teach you how to grow them and the many different ways that you can use them. If you want to grab the guide, go ahead. It's free and I'm pretty sure you're going to get a lot of delight and use out of it. And there's a link to it in the show notes. I'm wishing you tons of happy medicine planting.